back for your virtual tasting on Thursday night. I guess, what are we, July 23rd-ish? Yeah, Something 23rd. like that. That's right. Tom sure does fly when you're having fun, doesn't it? <clears throat> um, we have been diligently uh, putting these out every single week, really enjoying it. It's one of the few times that Chris and I actually get to sit down and hang out without all the, uh, the work-related stuff. This is really just not work it's fun it's it is fun, fun. We, we get to hang out with each other and we get to hang out with you kind of in a way um, but this has certainly been a real treat for us and we're going to keep on doing it and we've got another great selection for you this week it's uh we're going to start with some whites and we're going to do spain now we did some riojas recently white uh, rioja blanco and uh since Spain has been kind of on my, on my brain, thank you. I uh, thought we would kind of revisit a, a label that we're very familiar with. We uh, Luzon, uh, Luzon Selection. They do a fantastic job with their reds, and we've sold a lot of those here. And we thought it would be fun to, to kind of dive into their whites. Now, this grape, uh, Macabeo, is also known as Viura, uh, which is used in the Rioja region for their whites. Well, not many people know how great those whites are, so I think it's a good time for us to talk about them. And this is a this is a blend of uh, Macabeo and Sauvignon Blanc. So I feel like this is a great way to introduce Spanish wines to people or indigenous Spanish wines because with that blend of the Sauvignon Blanc, it's something you're very familiar with. And the Macabeo itself uh, really does shine through here, so you can get the best of both worlds, uh, something you're familiar with and something maybe you haven't had before. And Chef, uh, what are you gonna be pairing food-wise with this wine this week? Well, we've got a great goat cheese from Prodigal Farms. It's a new offering from them, it's called Candide. Um, it's an aged goat cheese. This is really, really nice. You know, the, the fresh goat cheese is uh, yeah, they change in character so much when you put a little age on them. The mushroom um, comes out, the earthiness comes out in this, and this is certainly no exception. Um, and, and while it is bright as a, as a goat cheese and it will pair beautifully with the, uh, the Sav Blanc, uh, this is a bit more robust uh, than some of the offerings we've enjoyed from Prodigal Farm, so it should be yeah. really, really exciting. That's a winner, and that, that'll make, I know, we have a lot of fans out there of all their cheeses, mm. and we I know we have a lot of goat cheese fans as well. So you will make for many, uh, many a friend, I guess. I would, I would be well pleased if it were served to me. So yes, that's yes. usually how I try to judge these things. Well, you know, we're we're looking here too at a very affordable wine, and the flavor is just popping here. Absolutely intense flavor, tons of citrus. It's incredibly structured, great food wine. That's why Chef wanted to pair cheese with it. The acidity here is just unbelievably uh, intense, but yet, um, as soon as you put it down, you want to pick it back That's up delicious. and have another right, That is yeah. absolutely delicious. And your Chef isn't big on white wines. He has, if he says it's delicious, boy, that really means something to him. It just smells like summer. Mm -hmm. It's just summer in a, in a glass. I mean, that's outstanding. Great balance on there. Oh, it's beautiful. Mouth-watering, delicious. Mm -hmm. And again, Luzon is a producer that we, we know and trust, and they consistently, vintage to vintage, put out great wines. You know, Spain is a, a, a very diverse country. It's, it's in its winemaking. There's wonderful regions all throughout, and it's my goal to explore all of them and, and introduce them to everyone out there. We are really enjoying the ride. Of course, we're not just doing Spain, we're doing the whole globe. So it takes us a little longer to get to all the places in Spain because we get sidetracked with Australia and Portugal and Italy and France. So, but we're Rightfully gonna, so. Yeah, and these are all worthy endeavors for sure. The, the white wines of the world are very diverse. And I think this is a perfect example of something that's Comfortable but different. You know? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. But the boy, this would go with so many things, or on its own. I know a lot of times we talk about wines 
you know, specifically for their pairings and the things they're to be enjoyed with and how some of the wines we always say, well, by itself, it's a little rough around the edges. Mm -hmm. No, no, it's not the case this, this, is, this beauty can do both. Mm -hmm. You could, you could um, crack this open by itself and, and really enjoy it for all of its character, but also a world of possibilities with pairings as well. I would imagine this would pair well with one of your tubes going down the little river. We'll find out. <laughs> we shall find this out. This is the time of year to be floating down the icy waters of Southwest Virginia. That water never warms up. It never warms up, and uh, well, we just now got our breath back, I think. From, <laughs> yeah. Even 100 yeah. degrees outside, and it would, the water will take yeah. the breath away. It's so cold, but... Uh, but it's refreshing. It's refreshing, just like this wine. So, yeah, this would be a great uh, poolside uh, boating wine. Um, just, it's so warm outside, and this is so refreshing. And, you know, this is the kind of wine that... You know, yesterday I was mowing, and I when I came in... I opened a bottle of Reposo and tried to drink it. Oh. It was just too much. Too much. So I pulled out a bottle of Sancerre. Smart. Sauvignon Blanc from, you know, we, Chris and I often, you know, kind of consider that, you know, the standard for Sauvignon Blanc. And it was absolutely gorgeous after, you know, losing three gallons of water. Yeah. I replaced it with wine. That is a wise, we had a similar uh, scenario. I did the same thing when I left work yesterday. I'd, some things to do around the house outdoors and did them and um, you know, I was ready for a drink and I mean I just couldn't everything looked nothing looked good right and um, that rosé from last week is at the river so I didn't have any white wines and so I had to uh, had to, had to drink a Gatorade <sighs> Before my transition to red wine, it was not a, it was not a, I would not advise it. Yes, stay away from us. Yeah. As long as we're making good wine, we, we need to stock your house a little better. We've been stocking the river, but from, not the... From your mouth to God's ears, my friend. <laughs> yes, so it shall yes, be. <laughs> yes, we do. There's a, it's, there's a lopsidedness there. Mm. Well, I can tell you that Trignon still tastes great after Gatorade. Bet, just so you know. Yeah. Uh, Although I would not suggest it, but it worked. It's a Cote de Rhone, folks, and we've. It just proves my point that we love Southern Rhone wines, and that's what we drink when we're not here. A lot of times, um, the 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 refreshment value of Cote de Rhone, you know, I, I think it, it can be refreshing at times, depending on you know if it's what level it is, but. It's red, but it's not over the top. It's not. It, it, it's not. It's not at all. But um, yeah, there needs to be more variety at the Wishart House for occasions mm -hmm. just like this. Well, let's transition over to a lighter red, um, where we were kind of talking about the Southern Rhone. And I've always found, you know, that Nebbiolo kind of falls in that same genre, although it tastes completely different. But this is also another one of Chris and I's favorite, along with the Southern Rum. Delicious. So this is uh, from Vara, uh, which is one of our favorite producers. They produce great Barolos and Nebbiolo-based grapes, uh, Nebbiolo-based wines, rather. And this is their Nebbiolo from Longue. Now, this, I would say, is kind of like a baby Barolo. It's not going to see the amount of oak uh, or barreling that you would in Barolo, but it's the same delicious grape, Nebbiolo, which we absolutely love. Nebbiolo doesn't really, it doesn't demand oak because it does have great tannins, um, but Barolo is known for it because when they add those extra tannins, it makes it incredibly ageable, even more flavor and longer life, where these might be more to drink in, you know, you know two to eight years where a Barolo could go for, you know, 40, 50, whatever it might be, uh, just depending on how well you're storing it and, and the level of the producer. But this is the, the grape, the same grape of, of Barolo, and a big fan of this. So you're going to get incredible aromatics here, coupled with a, uh, an intensity of flavor but yet a super, super easy, soft finish that will actually keep you wanting more and more and more. And it, it has a weight to it that you can drink it 
in a thirsty manner, if that makes sense. That makes sense to me. Yeah, yeah. So uh, what are we going to pair this with, Chevy? Well, <clears throat> we're going to have a beautiful lamb dish here. We've got a great lamb meatball. Um, we love our lamb and our Italian wines, don't we? Uh, so yes. this is just a, a, a very softly seasoned. We've got a little bit of local garlic. Um, great garlic from uh, Wavery Crest Farm. So I did a roast on the whole bulb. Uh, so there's a little bit of roasted garlic in there. There's some, there's some chopped herbs. A touch of lemon. A touch of balsamic. So it's you know, a real soft seasoning on this. You know, lamb is so fatty and flavorful on its own. Um, really the piling on of, of things into that is... It's fairly redundant, but we do like some aromatics there to bring out the, the character of it. Um, and then, of course, you just got some, you know, some great little roasted tomatoes. Again, we're getting tomatoes from everybody now. Uh, Roma Ready, Hedge Farm, uh, Minglewood Farm. So we've got some great roasted tomatoes to uh, pair with that. So it's going to be a great little addition to this beauty. Oh, that's a, that's a match made in heaven. Nothing better than Italian reds and lamb. Uh, the, like I said, the structure of the Nebula grape being such a light bodied yet intense flavored with high tannins is exactly what lamb cries for. It, it, it wants to, you, you don't want to wash away that, uh, the, the, the lambiness of it you want to complement mm. that because otherwise it's just like eating ground beef, yeah. right? Yeah, it's true. So you still want it to taste like lamb. And so this grape just complements it so well. There's a, there's a, there's a florality in here. There's a earthiness here and it just really does wonders with lamb. And I've never, never seen that go south. It's always been a winner. It, it's, you can just close your eyes and grab the two. I mean, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It's going to win. Yeah. Kind of like Sauvignon Blanc and goat cheese. <laughs> mm. That's beautiful. So, again, the structure's there. Long finish. Super red fruits. Uh, there's certainly notes of, of, of flower petals, red flowers, mm. maybe ro uh, hibiscus, hibiscus or sure. maybe a little rose petal, something of that nature, like a dried. It's absolutely elegant. It's the kind of wine that you can have with just about anything you drag off the grill too. So grilled veggies, grilled chicken, grilled steaks, uh, pork chops, and of course, lamb. And yes. lamb. Yes. So Great sausage season right now. Sausages, too. yes. You know, when I'm at the, I go to the store all the time. I'm, I'm probably there every other day. And, um, you know, I, I, I spend a, a disproportionate amount of time at the sausage section. <laughs> Uh, and sometimes I go just to check on it, just to make sure everything's all right. And um, I, I'm embarrassed how much sausage I buy, even if, like, not many people at the house like it that much. And, you know, then again, I didn't really ask them if they liked it or not, mm -hmm. uh, since I do the cooking. Yes. But uh, this would be great. There's you know, so many great uh, sausage companies, you know, in the, mm -hmm. in the state, in the region. Fresh sausages, cured sausages, you name it. But uh, I just love, I mean, Ed and I are no stranger to throwing some hoppium sausages on the That's right. on the grill right now, and you know, of course, there, there's also there's just every variety. What a great time to be alive! We have nine different varieties yeah. of fresh local sausages yeah. at the store, so th this would be well. You know, and, and you, you look at your gnocchi dish that you have here at the restaurant, uh, yeah. where you know you can take sausage and really elevate it to fine dining, mm -hmm. like Chris does. You know, with, with adding uh, little crumbles of, of sausage into a, a high-end pasta dish, and you've got really something special. And oh yeah, by the way, this goes great with pasta too. So if you wanted to do a little bit lighter something, uh, you know, dive in with some pasta. And, and sausage can be used as an ingredient, not just a standalone protein. The chef uses it as a complement and as a, as a seasoning ingredient in, in a lot of his dishes. Mm -hmm. And you get that little, those bursts of, of richness, but it's, it's not so much that it's gonna weigh you down. It keeps the dish light. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a sausage as a role player is, is one, of the, one of the great underachieved things because it does do all that. It gives you this, this burst of spice, of fat, of heat, whatever, whatever you have, but it's, it's not the, it's not, it's not the main flavor. You don't get that in every bite. 
it allows sausage is not so heavy that it allows your main component to still shine. Which uh, also is, it just so happens sausage is great with seafood. So if you're looking for something lighter and you know you want seafood, but you want to have it a little bit more complex, you know, having a small amount of sausage uh, complementing that seafood, where the seafood is not overwhelmed by it, it's not overtaken by it. You're probably looking at what a ratio of probably six to one. Maybe, yeah. You know, six, six. Let's say six ounces of seafood to one ounce sausage. And and really, th this is really where, where buying your sausage comes into play. Like you know, if you don't get the fiery Italian, you know, if you're going to have a soft white fish, you know, your mm -hmm. salmon, your salmon, your oilier, fattier fish are going to stand up better to the to the hotter um, sausages, but. You know, and, and we do this at the chef's table a lot. I love to do, and of course, I always consider it more Nordic, because um, I do a, a, a lot of sausage and with, with seafood or, or pork or bacon fat, you, you, you name it. Uh, but as Chef was saying, the ratios are important. You know, I even do little fish terrines mixed with sausage and, you know, all sorts of things like that, or even rooty vegetables, right? Right now, we're getting lots of what we would consider fall vegetables, but really they're coming out now. You have your butternut squash, your acorn squash, spaghetti squash, mm -hmm. which we usually associate with fall and bigger, richer things, but s sausage and squash and a little shrimp or scallops right now, you, can, you can't go wrong. I mean, it's a good, to me, that's a, that's a wonderful summertime dish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you got lots of options with this wine. We've got some, uh, yeah, we've got some pro tips here from our chef if you're going to design some stuff at home. But boy, it's gonna be banging with that lamb. I'm telling you, you're gonna be very, very happy. Can't wait. Um, you know, and you know, gosh, we got another uh, weekend of chef's tables. We're really excited. The phone's been ringing off the hook. We've got at least six, there's at least six couples uh, coming this weekend. Mm -hmm. I think they're all yeah, couples, they're right? They're all couples, yeah. And um, that's really, really exciting because, you know, Chris and I love, 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 love to to do the chef's table. So another seven, eight courses of, of magic will happen again Friday and Saturday night. We're excited about that. Also, uh, we've got our, our, our carry out family meals are really ramped up, chef. Absolutely, and we've um, extended these out quite a bit. You know, we were just doing a couple nights a week. We were actually running them Wednesday through Saturday nights now. So a lot of options there, and I'm really, <clears throat> we're calling them family meals, but, um, really getting outside of the of the comfort food zone here too you know we're offering a lot of different um the lamb meatballs are one of our options this week we're doing some some asian style chicken wings we're doing a korean style pork belly lettuce wraps with lots of fun sides i'm really mm -hmm. enjoying the making different sides right now we're getting a lot of uh, different salads and and mixtures we have so much fresh beautiful things coming in from the area so i mean to me i just ordered this, this, the side items are as fun as the center of the plate. We also have some, I brined uh, pork chops today. Um, beautiful brine on those and we're gonna sear them off with lemon and fresh herbs. Uh, it's just yeah, yeah. great summertime stuff. Yeah, I mean, you can't go wrong, check it out. And uh, those, all those dishes that are, they're going out pair so well with ONS wines too. Oh boy. Particularly you that, you know, when I, I immediately think of the Riesling uh, with those absolutely. wraps. I mean, absolutely. holy cow, oh, boy, that's, that's a, a match run. made in heaven. That's yeah. a home run. So, you know, we don't, you know, we have so many avenues here and uh, we hope that you uh, are taking advantage of some of them or even all of them. We, we do a lot of stuff here. We want everybody to take advantage of it. We have one more thing I'd love to tell you all about. Uh, we are having a Zoom uh, virtual tasting on August 1st. It's a Saturday <laughs> afternoon at 4 p.m. Really excited about this. Uh, Paolo DeMarie, uh, who has actually been here, what, was two and a half years ago, I guess? I mean, it's been a while, maybe three years, but it's it's been a minute. And uh, he's a winemaker and owner of a beautiful Barolo estate, and he's going to be introducing us to four of his uh, kind of summertime wines. They're lighter style. Uh, again, we try to drink seasonally, and some really interesting stuff. There's going to be an orange wine in there, which I'm really excited about. Yeah, it's going to be cool. One of those like really cool, trendy things that are going on that you know it's it's really an ancient way of making wine and now it's really kind of 
getting favored uh, begin in the in the public side. Well, so, it happens with so many things, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. They, they circle back around, yeah. right? The classics. Uh, Nothing kind of, new under the sun. That's, that's seem, seemingly so. So we would love to have you either join us here. We'll set up a projector. And as we did a couple weeks ago for Master Chef Larry O'Brien, or you can watch him from home, pick up the wines and the, and the tasting food to go along with it on Saturday um, and, and enjoy it from, the, from your home, or you can do it here, and we're really excited about that. We are. He is such a knowledgeable dude, and we really enjoyed his, his So visit. humble and nice. Uh, I mean, yeah. just, you know, just the kind of person you, know, you would think of. An Italian winemaker and owner from what is he three or four generations yeah. deep would be like the worst person in the world. So snooty and he, nothing could not. be further from the yeah. truth. You would if you walked in with three or four people, you wouldn't be able to pick mm -hmm. him out. Which yeah. one is I mean, just a just a genuine uh, yeah. person, very knowledgeable, always you know passionate to share uh, stories and talk about his wine. But on a human level, he's not speaking down to anyone. It's uh, yeah, highly recommend this and. <laughs> Boy, we're gonna have some great food with these wines. I can yeah, tell you. yeah, and th th these are gonna be very interesting wines. They're gonna be, you know, it's, well, they're gonna be new wines, uh, new fl flavor profiles to a lot of people out there. So it's a really exciting chance to learn and learn from the guy that made it, which I, I'm really excited about. Uh, you know, I, I, these are the things that, that really, you know, get my my wheels going. So we're really, really fortunate to have him. And we are going to enjoy the ride, and I hope that you can enjoy it with us. We really do, and uh, well, he's a good cook too. I mean, he, yeah. he forges his own truffles, and yeah, um, does lots of uh, very extensive menu suggestions and and, and things. So he's, yeah. he's a great cook, and I, I think they went well. Of course, we're biased, but we think those things go together. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, chef, um, it's always a pleasure to to spend some time with you, drinking some wine, and. Cheers. Cheers, my friend, to your health, and to your health at home. Good. Well, whether we see you in person or we see you at next week's tasting, I uh, hope you find everything delicious and nutritious. If you want to order some wines, obviously just give me a call at the winery and we'll make sure we have plenty for you. Have a great week. Take care. Thank you.